Today, we're diving into the evolution of containerization, from its humble beginnings with Docker to the expansive world of Kubernetes, we'll explore how this technology revolutionized software deployment and where it's heading next. Our journey starts with a fundamental question. Why containerization? Back in the early 2000s, deploying applications was anything but simple. Apps often required specific dependencies, configurations, and environments, leading to the common developer nightmare of it works on my machine, but fails in production. Developers needed a way to make software run reliably, regardless of the system it was on. Enter Docker. Launched in 2013, Docker made containerization accessible by packaging software and its dependencies into isolated, portable units. These containers could run anywhere, on laptops, servers, or cloud environments, making deployment much more flexible. Docker's impact was immediate. Developers could now create, test, and deploy applications in self-contained environments. Each container acted like a mini-system, bundling everything needed to run a service. This new approach drastically reduced compatibility issues and made deployment pipelines faster and more predictable. What's more, Docker containers required less overhead than traditional virtual machines, sharing the same operating system kernel while isolating processes. This efficiency led to a boom in adoption, transforming how development teams around the world worked. But as containerized apps became more complex, new challenges emerged. Docker was great for packaging applications, but what if you needed to run hundreds or thousands of containers? Managing these containers manually became unmanageable. Developers and organizations needed a way to orchestrate, scale, and manage containerized applications across large clusters of servers. This is where Kubernetes enters the scene. Originally developed by Google and later open-sourced, Kubernetes provided a comprehensive platform for managing containerized applications. It introduced powerful features like automatic scaling, self-healing, and load balancing. With Kubernetes, organizations could distribute workloads, balance traffic, and even recover automatically if a container failed, making applications far more resilient. By abstracting away the complexity, Kubernetes quickly became the de facto standard for container orchestration. While Docker popularized containerization, it wasn't the only option. As the ecosystem grew, new tools and standards emerged. Podman became a popular alternative to Docker, especially for those looking for rootless, demonless container management. Unlike Docker, Podman doesn't rely on a centralized daemon, offering enhanced security in some setups. Containered and CRIO are other notable tools. Both focus on providing lightweight, low-level runtimes, making them popular choices within Kubernetes environments, especially as Kubernetes introduced the Container Runtime Interface, CRI. These tools help Kubernetes manage containers efficiently, without the overhead of Docker's full feature set. The evolution doesn't stop with containers alone. A new trend is emerging, container-native virtualization. In scenarios where applications still require traditional virtual machines, tools like Kubevirt are enabling virtual machines to run alongside containers within the same Kubernetes environment. This hybrid approach allows organizations to slowly transition legacy applications to cloud-native environments or run both VMs and containers for specific workloads. It's a bridge between the old and new, offering flexibility in mixed infrastructure setups. So, what's next for containerization? As infrastructure becomes more distributed, we're likely to see even more integration with edge computing and serverless technologies. Kubernetes, with its growing ecosystem, continues to evolve, enabling even smaller devices and edge locations to benefit from container orchestration. Another major trend is greater focus on security and observability. With containers being deployed at scale, organizations need robust monitoring and security measures to manage complex distributed systems. 
tools like Falco for runtime security and Prometheus for monitoring are already essential components in many Kubernetes environments, but we can expect more innovation in these areas as challenges evolve. Finally, the rise of multi-cloud strategies means containers are likely to play an even bigger role, allowing companies to run applications seamlessly across different cloud providers. The goal, ultimate flexibility, portability, and efficiency. From Docker's early days to today's complex Kubernetes landscapes, containerization has reshaped the world of software deployment. It's given developers new freedom, reduced complexity, and transformed how applications are built and scaled. As we look ahead, one thing is clear. Containerization is here to stay, and its journey is just beginning. If you enjoyed this exploration of containerization, check out my other videos where I have practical examples of how some of these tools are working. See you next time.